got an exam question walkthrough here for structure determination for year 13. So the question looks at knowledge of some organic reactions, proton NMR and infrared spectroscopy. So because there's spectra involved, you're going to need access to your data sheet for your proton NMR shift values and your infrared absorptions. Don't forget to like and subscribe and if you want to leave a comment to suggest a future topic for a video, that would be great. So here's the question, it's on two slides, so if you want to pause the video, have a go at the question and then plan for the answers. Okay, so for the answers, I'm going to actually start with the information at the bottom there. Compound L is refluxed with aqueous hydrochloric acid forming two compounds, M and N, and the infrared spectra we're going to look at now. So infrared spectrum for M, I'm focusing on two key absorptions, this one here. So going straight to the data sheet, we would say that the broad absorption between those values indicates the OH bond of a carboxylic acid. And this absorption here, at around about 1700 cm to the minus 1, indicates the presence of a seedable bond O. So what that's telling us is that M is a carboxylic acid. So if we move on to the infrared spectrum for N, we've got one key absorption, that one there. That's the OH of an alcohol, so N's obviously an alcohol. So that's telling us that L must be an ester, because when it's been refluxed, with hot aqueous HCl, it's hydrolyzed and formed a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So move on to the proton NMR spectrum now. So first thing I'll do is put the functional group up for an ester. So I'm just going to work my way pretty much left to right. And I'm going to say set things about each peak. That's what I tell my students to do. And then we're just going to build up a picture of the different parts of the molecule. And then we'll put it together at the end. So starting with this absorption here, or this peak here, so that's a singlet, so use the correct terminology, singlet at delta 4.0 is due to the H to C, the single bond O environment. So we're talking about this side of the ester bond. There's no adjacent hydrogens, that's what a singlet tells us, but the area is two, so it must be a CH2 causing the peak. And so that part of the molecule is going to look like this. So we can start building up the molecule now. So we must have a C here with two H's on and then another carbon, but there can't be any hydrogens directly attached to that. Otherwise, we wouldn't have got that singlet. So the next peak is this one here. So that's a quartet. It's the H to C to C double bond O environment. So in other words, a carbon here with H's on. So H to C to C double bond O. So we're starting to build up this left-hand side now. There are three adjacent hydrogens. That's what the quartet tells us. But there's two in the environment. So what we must have is CH2 here. That's what's caused that peak. But there'll be a CH3 bonded to that. So that part of the molecule is going to look like that. Next peak I'll look at is this one here. So that's a triplet. It's an HC to R environment. There's two adjacent hydrogens, that's why we've got the triplet. But there's three in the environment, and so it must be a CH3 bonded to a CH2. So whenever you get a triplet and a quartet in your NMR spectrum, it means you must have an ethyl group in the molecule. So basically, I mean I've drawn that up again, but basically it's the other sort of way of looking at that. So remember this signal here was caused by them, whereas this signal here is being caused by them. So the final peak, this big tall one here with the area of 9, that's also a singlet. It's an HCR environment. There's no adjacent hydrogens, that's why it's coming out as a singlet. But the area of 9 means there must be three equivalent CH3 groups. So I'm sure you can work out that those CH3s are here. So that's what we've got there. So L must look like that.